Uh, in uh, this segment, uh, in our program, we are going uh, to talk about the benefits of traveling, especially that we are approaching the summer season and many people prefer to travel. Also, uh, we'll try to shed light to what extent uh, traveling uh, helps us to improve our social and communication skills as we get to know pe more people and uh, discover a new culture and cultures and places. And to talk more about the benefits of uh, traveling, we are joined here in the studio with uh, Mr. Ali Kurei. He is a frequent traveler uh, or a globe uh, trotter who will tell us more about his experience in this field. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. First, uh, Mr. Ali, tell us about the countries uh, that you visited. Uh, well, there are around 145 countries. Oh. <laughs> they are spread all over the world. Yes. But I would say that uh, I am in deep love with Africa. It's my favorite continent. And whenever I have the opportunity to travel, I start by Africa. Actually, in 10 days, I'm leaving. I thought you would tell me Europe. <laughs> well, Europe, you know, yes. I studied in Europe. Yes. And uh, I know Europe very well, as, as well as yes. the United States and the Western world, anyway. But Africa has a, a special spell. Yes. That uh, once you do it, when, once you go there, you are hooked. Like India. Many people tell you, you know, uh, India, what? It's, it's, yes. it's a crowded city, uh, yes. country, it's not very clean, and yes. so on and so forth. But it's got its own charm. A very unique kind of culture. Even Hinduism, yes. is very, spiritually speaking, yes. is very attractive, at least to yes. me. And I remember back in a long time ago when I visited India for the first time, I spent one month traveling from north, south, east, west, mm. all over. And I used to go to the Hindu temple in the south. It's mm. mainly the Tamil. They live in the south. They are very Hindu religion oriented very much. And I used to spend the whole day in this temple watching the people going through it, following the process, processings, you know, all over yeah. the temple. And it was quite an experience. Mm. And uh, so Africa, because I love very much the fauna, the flora, and especially fauna. And that's why I travel a lot. I remember I wanted to see the wild dogs in Africa. And they are getting very rare. They are almost extinct. So I was looking everywhere. Finally, I found a pack in Zambia. And I spent the whole day with that pack. You know, from early morning when they wake up, the leader, he goes there, they wake up the whole pack and they start hunting. He goes and the whole pack falls. And the after Wild dogs. Wild dogs. Once they have their prey, the mother would eat this prey and then go back to the cubs and give them this yes. digested food mm. into their mouth, you yes. know, yes. so that they can digest it easily. Yes. It's, it's a splendid way of watching, you know, nature in general. And this is what I like. So what you liked about Africa is nature and the wildlife and the strange animals. And the culture, the yes. African culture, the heritage of the tribes, how it yes. is important and predominant in the daily life mm. of the African in general. That's why it's so difficult sometimes for those people to understand the state, the statehood of their country because they believe they belong to the tribe and not to the state. Mm. It's a matter of time. They will learn, but it will take a very long time because the kid is born into that tribe. He knows everybody around him. He follows the culture. Yes. And then he hears about the state, the central yes. government and so on. Mm. But no practice. They don't see those people. To him, it's a kind of dream. Uh, so it's a the simple life. A big one? It's a very simple life. Yeah, the life simple. of tribes. You know, the West yes. doesn't understand this specific yes. of Africa. Uh, you know, democracy is very important mm. and we all believe in it blindly. But it does not apply to people like the, it takes time. You can start slowly, slowly mm. instilling this in the minds of the people, the tribes in Africa. And not only uh, in Africa, the tribes in the desert. Here For in instance, Egypt, I think we have some yes, tribes. Yes, we have a lot of tribes in Sinai. Mm. Why? Because they moved from Saudi Arabia north mm. and settled down in Sinai. And mm. then some of them crossed 
uh, you know, from Saudi Arabia to the southern part of Egypt, like uh, uh, the Ababda, for yes. instance, the and Rashida. They, said they have their own traditions as well. Yes, yes. The Rashida, they move back and forth, hmm. you know, between Sudan and Egypt. Hmm. They don't hold passports, nothing. And the governments yes. in both countries, they know this. They let them go. Yes. You know, maybe... We have some tension now, mm. so they are more strict, but it used to be that way. Did you meet any of those people? Yes, yeah, the Basharia. Yeah. Very unique tribe. They, they hardly speak any Arabic. They have their own language. We in don't Egypt? know where it comes from exactly. Are you talking about tribes in Egypt? Yes. And they yeah. don't speak Arabic? Yes, the Basharia. They are in the mountains of the Red Sea. They are yes. short, not very black, not dark black. Yes. You know, like Sudanese, you know, very long hair. Yes. And what they do is they trade with Aswan mainly. Really? They get charcoal. He takes his three, four camels uh, with the charcoals, and they, they move to it's Aswan. It's a very primitive life. Very prim primitive. They deliver the charcoal, mm. and then they get sugar, coffee, and so on back to the tribe. And they don't speak Arabic? A little bit, so th because they, they must speak a little yes. bit so that they can communicate yes. with Egypt, with yes. Egyptians. Yes. But mainly uh, Bisharia, they don't. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a foreign language to them. Okay. okay. And where, where, uh, where do they come from? Well, nobody knows exactly. Yeah. Probably, probably they move from, from Africa. Yes, the eastern part of Africa. Yeah. They moved north, probably. Yes. Like the uh, Rashida, they came from Saudi Arabia and they moved hmm. and settled down in Egypt. Uh, this, this is a fact. But uh, uh, there are other tribes called the Bidja. Hmm. They live in Sudan mainly. Yes. Uh, the continuation of this tide of tribes from the north, it moves into Sudan south. Uh, it's, it's, yes. it's a lovely way of uh, living. You know, living. Yes. I uh, met them many, many times. I spent some time with them sleeping on the floor. You know, and uh, uh, the way they eat, it's always things that are very healthy. And they know it by tradition. Mm. They hear from their parents, grandparents, and so yes. on. And I remember driving the car once, I had some stomach ache. Yeah. So the guy was sitting next to me, he said, stop, I'll get you something that will remedy this immediately. Herbs. Herbs. Yes. He got there, he, put, he brought it back, put it in tea, and I drank it. And it was a miracle. A few hours Oh, it's okay. And they have things uh, for uh, diabetes, many, yes. many other things. The desert is full of herbs, that medicinal herbs, that are very important to human beings mm. and not used enough. Okay. Um, uh, what uh, did you learn uh, from traveling? Oh, a lot, a lot. You know, when you meet people, mm. you know, I know exactly from the very beginning that this person has traveled frequently around the world. The way he thinks, he convinces you, how he analyzes things, mm. he is different to the others. Mm. For instance, when people talk to me, they tell me something, I never take it for granted. It goes into the brain, I always tell my friends, filter the information first. Get it from here, filter it, yes. and get it from the other side. Yes. Unfortunately, many Egyptians don't do that. They repeat what they hear, like yes. parrots. Mm. But no, you have to digest it yes. first and then speak it out. Even if Egyptians don't have the money to travel abroad, they can travel inside Egypt itself. Yes. As we were talking, you told me that there are many places undiscovered to Egyptians themselves. That's right? true. <laughs> you know, the oasis. Now, many Egyptians know about the oasis. But yes. if we talk about... 20 years ago or mm. 30 years ago, very few people knew about it. I had some friends. One of them, uh, he, he traveled a lot in the desert, and he knew all parts of the desert. Mm. Unfortunately, he made a terrible accident yes. in Sinai. Mm. He was driving a Dodge heavy car, yes. and they uh, arrived to a place to camp. He parked the car, but then said, listen, I'm going to move the car a little bit mm. because I don't like this position. He got into the car, moved just half a meter, and a terrible explosion happened. It was a mine yeah, okay. against tanks. Mm. So the poor the guy... In, it's, it's, it's results from the old war? 
probably 67 yeah. yes. because it was deep in Sinai. Yeah, okay. We crossed the canal for about 15 mm. kilometers only. Mm. So it was from the time of the war in yes. 67, most probably. Yeah. And uh, he lost a leg, uh, an arm, an yeah. eye. But he had the will to teach himself how to travel again. Mm. Driving the car himself, climbing the mountains in a, in a difficult way, but he did it. Yes. And I respect people like this. Mm. And he did it for 10 more years until he died yes. a few years ago. So uh, those places are now known to some Egyptians. But you'll be amazed. Foreigners are the first ones to discover those places. Mm. They read all books of foreign explorers mm. who went into these areas. And they come to the country. They find somebody to hire a car with, a good driver, 4x4 four four car, and they go. They come back and explain to Egyptians what they did. So the Egyptians will, will say, you know, I will do that. I want mm. to go. Those who are acquainted with the desert, I mean, not just uh, a, a normal man, a layman, I would say. And they go and so on. So the word of mouth is there. The number of people knowing new places in Egypt is increasing these days. And you'll be amazed. Yes. You know, uh, the frontier between Egypt and Sudan is uh, uh, 22 degrees you yes. know, in the south. If you cross it, you are in Sudan. Yes. There is a place where you have pyramids. Hmm. Uh, no big ones like course, ours. Yes. No, it's much smaller. But, uh, I mean, uh, a kind of understanding. Yes. Maybe Egyptians can move and watch these pyramids and come back. Exactly. Yes. They can organize, you know, a, a tour that are organized by Sudan and Egypt jointly. Yes. You visit uh, Abu Simbel, for instance, for Sudanese, yes. and we visit this area for Egyptians. Also, uh, Mr. Ali, you have some uh, pictures for your adventures. Can you show it to our <laughs> No, Egyptians? just a few yes. ones. This is uh, yes. the team that uh, went into the Lake Nasser, you know, and we spent 10 days there exploring the area. I am here in the middle, this and is uh, my when? recently or no, that long was ago? Uh, maybe yes. ten years ago. Ten years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the team with the four by four cars. This mm. is where we camp yes. for a few days, and then we travel around and come back to the main camp, which is yes. here. And uh, this is uh, when the sun goes down. It's a superb, you know, area. Yes. I love it. Lake Egypt. Nasser is a fantastic place. Yes not enough uh, exploited i would say uh, we have to watch it you know uh, not too many tourists yes. because they spoil it but at least controlled like using the boats in the lake behind them mm -hmm. it should be controlled not more than 15 boats or 20. Uh, look at the tilapia yes huge you know uh, at least four or five kilograms that you yes. don't find here in egypt anymore mm -hmm. it's only in this area you know, just, just a sample. Uh, this is my friend I was talking about who lost his arm and leg. Yes. Ibrahim Helmi, the late yes. Ibrahim Helmi. And this guy is also uh, joining us in mm. every trip. He's a, he knows about what, fauna, Egyptian fauna, better than any scientist in Egypt, I can tell you. Yes. Because he's there day and night, and he knows it. So just So just what do you sample. mean by Egyptian fauna? Uh, the, the animals, wild animals yes. in Egypt. We have okay. different species and subspecies of the Egyptian wolf. Yes. And uh, other reptiles and birds, what, name it. And also migrating animals and birds. So when you go to the desert, you uh, start looking for these animals? Yes, yes, we do that. Either yes. you go by night, mm. because most of them, they go hunting at night. Yes. Or during the day, if you are lucky, you see some animals moving late. So uh, do you think that it is not dangerous to approach these wild animals? No. Or do you um, have your precautions? Yeah, no. Once you know, you understand in this fauna, which I do. Yes. I'm not saying I, I'm an expert, but I know a little bit. There is a distance that you have to keep between yourself and the wild animal. Okay. If you cross this dis distance, mm. you might be attacked. Yes. But if you know exactly how to stand, he will not attack you, mm. unless he is feared. Once uh, he, he has this fear, he will attack to protect himself. Mm. I can tell you something that happened to me in Zambia. I was walking uh, 
safari, walking, not in the car, uh, with a guide from Zimbabwe. Mm. And then we saw a kind of branch. Yes. So uh, I stepped on that branch, it started moving. Yes. So I looked, it was a snake. Okay. So the guy said, if you want to, to uh, shoot that uh, photo, go ahead, but be cautious. So one of the guys, you know, he pushed the tail of the snake, and then this monster came out, three meters long, okay. and straight against me. Okay. So I had to run backwards without even turning my head, mm. because it was a constrictor. It's not venomous, but it will squeeze you until yeah. you suffocate and swallow, not me, I mean, but yeah. uh, smaller prey. Yes. And they swallow it whole. And okay. then he started, starts digesting two, three, four days, somewhere, mm -hmm. hiding until he digests it completely. So can uh, you tell us about the countries that share the same traditions and cultures like Egypt? I can tell you that the Muslim countries, they mm -hmm. share many things. Yes. Whether it is Indonesia mm -hmm. uh, or, or Malaysia, Malaysia and, and even China. Yes. Ching, Ching, my, uh, uh, they call it, no, San Ching, in the northwest of China, yes. there is a very large mm. uh, Muslim community. Uh, they share many things with us. Mm. In Africa, East Africa mainly, you know, in Tanzania, yes. Muslims constitute about maybe 50% of the population. Even yes. Ethiopia, even, between 45 and 50%. Yes. Even Mozambique in the south. So uh, the, the, the Muslims are spread everywhere, and they share, especially during the festivities, yes. the religious, religious festivities, mm. very similar to uh, Egypt and, and the North African countries as well, the Arab yes. countries in general. So they, yes, we have a lot of common with those people. So uh, tell us about a strange situation that happens to you in one of your trips other than the one about the snake. <laughs> yeah, I was in, in Zanzibar. Yes. That's a splendid island. I love it in it's the Indian island. Ocean, yes. yes. And it was during the Eid, again, religious mm. festivity. Mm. And I wanted to film this festivity. So walking on the street was very dark. And I saw a football place field. And uh, lots of light. People were, you know, uh, Celebrate. enjoying, celebrating, yeah, enjoying that, their yes. time there. So I decided to go. Walking down the slope, all of a sudden, I found myself, myself walking into a ditch and falling into a, a ditch of cement. Yeah. And then I came out, uh, I saw that my leg was uh, hurt very much, yeah. uh, losing blood continuously. Mm. So I didn't know what to do. Uh, so I walked back to the main road. I found somebody coming on a motorcycle. So I waved at him, he mm. stopped. I said, I have this, can I go to a hospital? Yes. He said, yes, sure, jump. We went to the hospital, a big building made of wood. I got inside, you know, lots of people sick, you know, on the floor. This is in Denzibar, the island? Yes. Yes. And then uh, the nurse came, you know, she, she saw a white man. She, she decided to give him yes. a special treatment. Yes. Okay, come, come, we'll try to do something about it. She went inside to look for some alcohol. Yes. Oh, sir, we don't have any alcohol. We just finished it, you know. Yes. So, so what can I do now? Yes. He said, okay, take a taxi, go to any of the pharmacies, you might get some antibiotic, and then use some stitches, yes. because it was open, oh, you know. Yeah. I said, okay, she called the taxi for me, we went, we looked, I told the taxi driver, we went to the pharmacy. He said, okay, we can do something about it. He got and made three stitches, yes. and then he said, sorry, antibiotic, we have expired antibiotics. I cannot okay. give you something that is... Expired. Uh, uh, I said, okay, I will try it. I went to my hotel. The following day, my legs started swelling, mm. turning into red yes. and hurting. But still, I went filming for one day, two days, and it was still swelling, swelling. I said, no, it's getting dangerous. Yes. So I went to Dar es Salaam, mm. by hydrofoil. I took a plane to Nairobi, straight to the hospital. I found a white doctor from Poland. Yes. So the first thing I asked him, doctor, is it gangrene or what? Yes. He said, no, I don't think so. Come, come, come. Mm. He gave me some injections, uh, mm. uh, medicines, I don't know what, yes. and said, okay, you better go home and rest. Mm. So next day I took the plane to Cairo. I rested, okay. but it took me almost two weeks to heal. Okay. But that was quite an experience. Uh, it's not a good experience, but uh, anyway, yes, Africa is good, but I think that uh, it lacks some uh, services. 
Yes, yes, I know. Yes. They, uh, it's like, dangerous like in this all, uh, yes. Uh, yes uh, the only bad thing about it. So, uh, to what extent investment in traveling is considered an investment in ourselves? Yeah, because you learn new things. Yes. New habits, cultures, people. Yeah. Uh, even, even. It's broad in your mind. Everything. Mm. It's something new. Instead of being isolated in your country, you go out and you learn a lot from those people. And believe me, it's even uneducated people, you can learn from them because they, they learn from nature. And this is what you, you need yes. from time to time. So um, as you are traveling, how do you manage to preserve the environment and the beauty of the places that you visit, especially in Egypt? You know, uh, in general, when you yes. go to national parks, you have to pay attention to the fauna. Yes. Because if you are driving a 4x4 four four car mm. and you step on these uh, beautiful uh, plants and you destroy them, especially in the desert, it takes a very long time for those plants to regenerate. Mm. And this, you know, you should avoid at any price. Even in national parks in East Africa, this is the same problem. You have to follow the track that has been used for years and years yes. and avoid going into the plains because you will destroy the grass. You know, the, the savanna in general. Mm. So yes, you, you, you must have a certain culture how to enjoy nature without destroying it. Very yes. important. Also, uh, uh, you're talking about Egypt and uh, the desert. Yes. Uh, people who, uh, who goes to visit these places should keep it clean for exactly. tourists when they you know, come. So, when, we, when we go to the desert, yes. you know, the whole group, everybody knows the following day, when we move out of the camp, yes. everything has to, to be put on fire. Mm. But we leave some, the rest of the food. Why? Because animals would come and feed on it. Yes. So you are rendering a service to those animals. Yes. But otherwise, plastic bottles and so on, all burned. Yes. You know? So and all tourists and Egyptians should, uh, should take care of these things when they go to camp in the desert. The main thing is the guide himself. Yes. If the guide knows exactly what to do, he will force the people to follow the rules exactly. Mm. So the guide is very important and essential and the Ministry of Tourism should train and select the proper people to work as guides. Mm. Very important. Also Egypt is uh, distinguished by health uh, uh, tourism. So uh, what's your take on this? I know that in Aswan and the Oasis uh, they can go for kind of treatment. Mm. Uh, by digging themselves in very hot sand, yeah. special sand, uh, many times, mm. uh, many days consecutively, to, uh, to, to heal. And it, it gets good results. And there is another spot uh, along the, the Red Sea in Safaga, yes. also can be used. Uh, and I'm sure that if they, uh, if they travel around the desert, the mm. Egyptian desert, they will find places where they can he those nature. people, yes, yes, and advocated outside of Egypt yes. as a place to, to use it. Okay, Mr. Ali Korea, a frequent traveler and the globe charter. Thank you for being with us Thank today. You. Thank you very much. Now, dear viewers, this brings us to the end of today's edition of Carlo Time. Thank you for watching.